Impact. Real human interest stories ranging from the ordinary to the truly extraordinary. Hello, this is Fatima Hussein, and you're listening to Impact, the program which introduces you to extraordinary human interest stories from around Canada. A few years ago, Richard Miller served his time in federal prison. The racism, injustice and abuse he experienced left a profound effect on his mind and soul. He was quick to notice the lack of support for rehab for those convicted, both inside and outside. Today, Richard works towards making a meaningful difference in the lives of those who have been impacted by the Canadian criminal justice system. This episode is a first-hand experience of a former inmate and his effort towards helping youth tied up with the justice system. Hi, I'm Richard Miller. I founded an organization called Keep Six. The reason for me to be founding this organization was to address the corruption and educate families and young people about our justice system, but also how to navigate through the system and not get caught up in the system because the system itself is a trap. My experience in the system came about many years ago. I was charged with assault and I went through the system serving a sentence in a provincial facility. I later on picked up another assault and was sentenced to a federal sentence and went through the federal system. One of the things I've noticed while serving my sentence is other individuals are in there and do not know how to navigate through it, but also are very suppressed from the situation that they're going through and not being able to have support or legal counsel to represent them in for their charges. And a lot of times they're just pleading guilty just to get through the case. At one time, I would say that I was very upset about the system itself, but I feel that the anger that I've had over the years about the system, I didn't channel in it in the right way. And that same anger uh, just kept me in the system. And one of the things that upsets me is that we have a system that is supposed to be justice and it's supposed to be fear, but that is not the case. If you ever stop and look at individual being processed through the system, they are being degraded, they're breaking down, and you're broken down all the way through the system itself. From the day through the courts, through the correctional facility, to be on parole or probation, it's all your self-esteem has been taken, broken down from you, and your value is diminished. There is a, a large particular of racism that uh, exists in our justice system. I recall myself personally a few years ago in a provincial facility where a correctional officer uses the N-word by saying that you all belong in such and such a place. When I addressed this issue to the superintendent of that facility, they brushed it off and I also wrote a letter to our deputy minister who replied back and as for this day, have never yet received an apology. I was told that the officer was sent for retraining. The thing about it is that these situations happen on a regular basis and they're not being dealt with in a fair manner where these officers or these individuals that work in these facilities or work in the system is able to take accountability for their actions. One of the things I feel strongly that can be done to correct this would be retraining a complete overhaul of the way the system is operating. It is broken. We need to have our government official really step up to the plate and address these matters. And overall, the system, the system needs to be revamped. This is something that's been going on for many hundreds of years and it hasn't changed. And I'm sure it's not going to change overnight, but it has to be somewhere where it has to start, where you have to look at what's going on, look at how people are being treated and 
every one of these people that's going through the system, sometime or another, they have to come back out into society. So you have to be able to uplift these people and give them the avenues that they need to better themselves, not suppress them deeper into a darker situation in their lives. I did not go to prison for a crime that I did not commit. I did commit the assault charge. And I, I've i turned back and look at the actions and take accountability for my actions. But in the same token, I've realized that over the years, my experience in the system, I was rebelling. I was angry at how I've been treated. I was angry at the injustice that I see individuals' faces and also myself. And I was going about it the wrong way, trying to to fight my way through it and that in turn got me deeper into the system. I've got to the point where I would use violence and violence was the, the way that it worked best for me inside the system and that's what the atmosphere itself brings, a lot of violence. So you might go on in there and you're not a violent person but you tend to pick up these attributes because it's a part of the survival and a part of the atmosphere. At the same token, you don't have the ability to, to look at what you're actually doing because you are in a place where you're training yourself to think that I have to do what I have to do to get through this situation. And that is a part of the atmosphere itself. Now, when you are back in a community, one tells, one fails to understand that you need tools to function. You need, you're suffering from trauma. You need to regroup. You need support. You need counseling. You need a lot of things once a person is released. And over the years, myself personally felt that I was okay, but I wasn't. I was a damaged person. I came out and just figured, well, I'll just carry on with life the way it left off and pick up from the pieces from where I was. And that wasn't the case. I needed to get in depth with myself. I needed to fix myself from within to be a better person and let go of whatever experience I went on while I was going through that circumstances at that time. It was very traumatic. I myself honestly didn't realize the significant damage that it had done to me, but also what I carried for all these years. I carried a lot of hatred. And I think if for anyone in society to understand it, you'd have to have your loved one going through these experiences and seeing that person change and to be able to understand where they're coming from. But most of all, the only thing you can do is give them support, but be able to help that person to be a much better person and, and get in tune with himself because you're dealing with trauma. I have witnessed everything from a violent beatings to a person over overdosing and dying in front of me. I, I have witnessed these things. So you have to stop and think, I mean, a lot of people might say, well, a person goes and do uh, being incarcerated, you know, they've been punished, but they've been, you've been punished, you know, over and over even after you serve your sentence because you've got those traumatic experiences from debt to assaults to things that you've experienced and you're carrying those on back out of society which you're not aware that you're actually so damaged from these experiences. And in the same token, we don't have a system that is taking accountability for these experiences that one goes through while they have you serving these sentences. The hatred that I, I developed was towards the system. I felt that how can we have a system that is supposed to be, as they say, justice, and it's supposed to be right from wrong. And then this same system is doing so many things that's wrong. And who is the system accountable to? So here's a system that's judging me and punishing me for something that I have done. But who is punishing the system for what they have done? The system has in place avenues for you to make complaints. But when an individual making a complaint, it's the system itself investigating the system. So where exactly is the accountability when you are looking at your own wrongdoing and giving a reply that you haven't done anything wrong? 
One of the things I, or a few of the things that I, I try to address when I am dealing with building the organization itself is to help individuals once they're released. One of the big thing I try to focus on is employment, mentorship, programs. The reason for this is when a person is released, they are coming out in that community and trying to adjust. They want employment. Now they have a criminal record. It's very difficult for them. They've been stigmatized. They have people that will not employ them. They don't have skills that may be needed to get secure jobs that is good paying. So again, they're being suppressed. They have, they might be on parole or probation and that worker that they have don't have the capability or the tools to assist them or just have such a big caseload that they don't have the time to invest in these individuals to assist them in the, in the needs that they need. And I find it that if we we are, as a society, wants to be able to rebuild these people. We have to be able to work and invest in the lives of the future of these young men and women. We have to be able to take the time to look at resources and be able to teach them and give them the help that they need. We cannot be sitting back and expecting changes unless we're willing ourselves to step forward and help to make some changes. And that's the difference in my own personal experience, why I am so passionate about what I do, because I have lived that experience and I've seen the struggle that these people go through. And that's why I try to have things from the programs to the assistant and build a team of people who is able to work with these people and give them the necessary help that they need to build something sustainable, but also to rise and not look back to go back into the system. Because the way it's set up, it's set up as a revolving door. You, If you stop and look, a person might get out and there might be a parole. Well, you have that parole condition where they might not be able to see their family for a period of time or they can't go to an area where they grew up all their lives. So all these things are triggers for that individual. And they might just get fed up one day and says, well, I don't want to be out here anymore because there's too many rules and regulation. I can go back and just finish off my sentence and don't have to answer to anybody being on parole or anything like that or probation for that matter. Keep Six came about while I was sitting doing my sentence. The name Keep Six is something that's used within the justice system. So on the inside of an institution, you'll hear uh, someone will say Keep Six. Keep Six means looking out for the guard. So if I'm doing something, someone's going to be the six man and you don't want to get caught. So I wanted a name that young people or individuals could relate to. So I picked the name Keep Six. And the way I vision it and use it is Keep Six looking out for the next generation because I don't want to see a younger generation going through what I had experienced. Keep Six, when I put it, when I made it into, put it together to be an organization and to help, I wanted to reach out to the community. I wanted to reach out to young people in this community. I wanted to educate them. I wanted to let them know that there's somebody here for you to advocate for you. There's someone here that can give you some knowledge that if you are in problems. Here's the way to navigate through it. Here is a legal representation. There's support for the mother who has a son who might have been arrested and she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know how to talk to her son. You can't pick up the phone and call family. You have to have money. You have to have a special phone system to be able to call out. So that was my main purpose at the time when I tried to, when I was in the process of putting it together. I wanted to make our community know there is help for them and there was a resources available. My coping mechanism through going through the whole process, one of the biggest coping help for me was one of my attorneys. I was able to call him on a regular basis. And I think I probably spent every day calling him because he was my support and also my family. He gave me tools I needed. He, he gave me a lot of uh, knowledge. He educated me. He showed me how I was able to write and legally challenge these situations I was going through in the, in the system, the things that I felt that wasn't right. He, he taught me uh, how I was able to file grievances, uh, how I was able to reach out to 
our uh, attorney general or the deputy minister or the minister of correctional service. So I, I'm very grateful for this because I, I think, honestly, I probably wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the support that I had from my legal team and, and also my family. That was one of my main support, I would say, that got me through my time. There's a great deal of underrepresentation when it comes to minorities in the system. It is something that's been going on for over 500 years, and it hasn't changed. The only way I feel that we can move forward and try to overcome this for ourselves is by educating ourselves and being able to stand up together and help each other. We have to have a voice and let our voices be heard. We cannot expect changes unless we are able able to move forward and as a group. One person cannot change it overnight. And you have to remember at all times that these system, it's set up a way to suppress these young people. Poverty plays a big role. You are having young people who's going through the system who might have, say, 29 convictions. That person has never had a trial a day in their life, but they've pleaded guilty to everything because they don't have the funds and the legal aid lawyers are forcing them to plead guilty because they don't want to do the work or do take them to trial. So there it is right there. I mean, just the way the system is built all around, you know, from start to finish is built to hold an individual down and trap you there. If a young person has experienced any kind of traumatic experience or been through the system, been through the system itself is traumatic, please take the time and reach out for some counseling. Reach out and let someone get within, assist you to find the root of things that you've gone through. Because a lot of times we feel that we're okay and there's nothing wrong with that. But deep within, we need a little bit of tuning up. We're just like a car, you know, you drive it, sometimes you have to give it an oil change, you have to retune the motor. That's the same thing with us as human beings. And that's one of the best way that you can break the cycle is to find out what's causing you that pain within. And at Keep Six, we've got a psychotherapist service. We've got counseling that we offer specifically for these individuals, someone who's been arrested, someone who's been in jail, someone who's been in prison. We have these services. We have these professionals. And that's the reason for these people is to help so that you can live a very productive life and contribute to society, but most of all, not being trapped in the system. Thankful for me, it wasn't difficult because I personally, I have a trade. I had good support and I had employment. So it's, it's a lot different for me compared to a lot of individuals. I took time to work on myself mentally and within. So I had already mapped out where I was going, what I was doing, how I was getting there and what I was going to do when I get there. So given the way I had things, it was a lot different for me and it, was, it wasn't as challenging. But a lot of my challenge was within the, the system itself, like being on parole and dealing with parole officers, the corruption, and, and they're trying to suppress you and, and so forth. That was my only biggest challenge I came across. I learned how to navigate it and stand up for what I believe in because a lot of times they, they're not used to individual speaking up and challenging what they're saying. And I always say, if you give me a rule, who made that rule? Why are you, why shouldn't I challenge you? If I don't believe what you're telling me, why is it that you're forcing me to believe you? So that, that was my only challenge I face. Otherwise, I still up to this day stay focused and I have good support and I continue to build. And, and growing, that, that's what it's all about. It's all part of growing and being, expanding your mind and your body. That was Richard Miller, founder of the organisation Keep Six. To find out more about Richard, visit his website, Keep Six, that's K-E-E-P-6-I-X.org. And before we leave, we'd like to extend our thanks to Richard and VX3 Exchange. Impact is a production of VX3 Exchange, featuring the stories of extraordinary people, sharing their stories again and again at VX3Exchange.com or our social platforms at VX3Exchange.